Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. You know, out in the field, we spend a lot of time getting our photographs as sharp as possible. We put great lenses on our cameras. We use good quality film. We use all kinds of lens hoods and things to stop flare. We carry around a tripod. All of these things are to try to get a sharp negative. So when we come back to the dark room, we want to keep that workflow, that sharpness workflow, going for us as much as possible. Let's pop over to the enlarger and take a look at the things that I do to try to keep my prints pin sharp. Now here are some test negatives. I'm touching them with my fingers. Don't do this. This is not how you handle negatives, but I want to just demonstrate this to you. So I'm going to first of all talk about the negative carrier because that has a lot to do with sharpness. Here's the negative carrier on this Magnifax 4. It's a lovely carrier. It's, it'll take all sizes of negatives up to um, 6 by 9 and you'll see that I have glass. If I get the light to shine off it, there you are. I have glass in the top and glass in the bottom of the negative carrier. And that glass in the top is anti-Newton glass, which means it's got a very, very soft irregularity on it to stop the negative touching completely against the glass. And that stops little rings that form, some kind of optical rings that form from the two different translucencies of glass and negative. Let's open it up. So here we have those test negatives and I'm going to pop them in. In the back of this negative carrier there's some adjusters. I can adjust these moving parts here. I'll push them back because I'm going to be using 120 and I'll put my negative in that I want to print and then I close up the carrier and now I want to get that negative if I just look above it. Here we go. I want to get that negative as close to the center as possible if I can show you that. That way it's in the optimum area of the lens so keep your negatives right in the middle. Okay, so that glass is holding that negative absolutely flat. And that way, if it's going to be sharp on the left of my print, it's going to be sharp on the right. If it's sharp at the top, it's sharp at the bottom. We're keeping it absolutely flat. If your negative carrier can take glass, please get it. It will help your sharpness. I'm going to put this back up into the enlarger. And the next thing down from this negative carrier is the lens and that's the next thing we'll talk about. Now I've got 120 film in this carrier and so I need an 80 or 90 millimeter lens thereabouts and get a good lens, a good quality lens. I use Nikkor lenses but there's many good ones out there. Rodenstock, the Myopta lenses are very good. And I have this lens wide open. And the reason I have it wide open to start is because that's how I'm going to focus it. I always focus my lens wide open. And then when I'm going to do my test strips and my prints, I close it down two stops. Now, the reason I close it down two stops for my test prints and my test strips, I should say, and my prints is because I'm optimizing the lens. And we've talked about this in previous videos about your camera. If you want to optimize the quality of your lens, close it down two stops. That's where it's engineered to be at its best. Two or three stops. So in this case, F11 or F16 are its two best F stops. But for focusing, I use it wide open. Going down to my easel here, I'm now going to put some paper in the easel like that. And this is the same thickness as my print paper. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't actually do this all the time because I found in my testing with my equipment, there doesn't seem to be any difference between focusing with a piece of paper in here or not having a piece of paper in here. I'll be honest about that. But I know a lot of people like to they feel better if they've got a piece of paper down there that's the same thickness as their print paper. And so let's do that. 
I've got my piece of print paper in there and now I bring in my special tool and this is the winning combination. Having one of these, a decent lens and a flat negative and you're going to get sharp prints. This is a grain focuser. It magnifies the image coming down from the negative. It magnifies it through here and we can see the grain and get it really critically sharp. And then we know our print's gonna be spot on. So first things first, we turn the lights off, we shine the light down through the negative and we focus it by eye as close as we can to spot on focus by eye. That's important. The next thing we do is we put our grain focuser on and we continue, I'll open this up here so you can see there's a mirror there. We continue to look through here and focus that grain and get it spot on. Now there's a couple of tips you need to know about these grain focusers. One, you need to set them up. Now, whenever you buy a grain focuser, you set it up the first time you use it and you'll probably never set it up again because once it's set up, it's set up for good. You look through this viewfinder here and you'll see inside here, you'll see some lines. You unscrew one of these screws or we'll look at another grain focuser in a minute, different ways of doing this. In this case, you unscrew this screw slightly and you can move this eyepiece up and down and you move it until the lines that you see through here are absolutely spot on focused and then you tighten up this screw. And that is now set up ready as a grain focuser. Move it around and focus your grain. Now, if you're struggling to see the grain, and it's quite possible, some of these films these days are very, very fine grained. Move the grain focuser around until you see a place of contrast. You'll see it, you'll see a dark and a light together. Then keep the grain focus there. And again, adjust the focus on your enlarger until you can see the grain become absolutely sharp. If you've been playing around for a couple of minutes and you can't do it, step back, move away, can sharpen the image again with your eyes on the baseboard or on this piece of paper, and then come back and do it again. And if you still are struggling to see the grain, then go up to your lens and close it down two stops where you would print it. And then go back and try again to find the grain. You may find by closing your lens down two stops, the grain will be easier to see and easier to get sharp. Now you know if that grain is sharp in this grain focuser, that print is gonna be absolutely as sharp as it can be. There are other grain focusers, and this one here is a scope and net, and the scope and net grain focusers are very good because they're tall. Look at the difference in height. And this advantage is that if the head of my enlarger is up high and I'm having to reach up high to get to the focus knob on the enlarger, this helps me because I can just put my head down to this height and it's not so far to go down. So I can just look through here get the sharpness while my hand is up high. So they're good if you do that often. Again, there's an adjuster on this. You just have to unscrew this and then you turn this one and it turns in and out and focuses the lines that you see inside here when you, when you look through this viewfinder. Finally, the Rolls Royce really of grain focusers has got to be the Micro Amiga. And I'd be very interested if any of you think there's a better one than this, please put your comments below. I'd love to know if there's a better grain focuser. But this one is superb. And the reason it's superb, I'll open up this door. There's the mirror that reflects the negative in through here. This is adjustable look, just like any of the others. And the reason this is so good is because look, you can actually move this eyepiece up and down. Now there's a long mirror on this, and the reason for that is so that you can go up to the corners, right to the corners of your negative and, look, and move this eyepiece and then make sure they're in focus, each corner as well as the center. Now why would you do that? Because surely if it's flat 
and you're in the center, then everything's going to be sharp. And you'd be right, that's normally the case. But this is useful because it tests your enlarger to make sure that the plane of the negative is the same as the plane of the baseboard. There, I think you'll be getting the gist now of how to really optimize your print quality. You know, for me, if I make a print, I really want to keep it as sharp as I possibly can. If the negative isn't sharp because I've made a mistake in the original photograph, yeah, I can't get that back. I can't make that sharp. But if the negative is sharp, if I've done, if I've done my work in the field, then I wanna bring that negative back here and I wanna really optimize it on my print. And these are the tools and the methods I use. I hope that's useful to you guys. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you all watching this. And thank you very much to those who buy my book and to my patrons. Bye for now.